Well, good morning. Welcome home. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection welcoming you to this exciting a ye old merry hour of Tampa Home Talk. We've got an exciting hour planned for you today. We have market stats, which I'm always liking. It is the first day of spring happened this week. I was so excited, I nearly wet my plants. I had to. I actually didn't see it on Facebook. I haven't used social media in years. Uh, my foreign exchange student uh, daughter actually provided that to me earlier this week. And I was uh, told her in honor of her um, and spring, I would pursue the dad jokes. Full swing today. It was a good one. I, I, I laughed really hard. I almost cried. That wasn't a joke. Anyway, moving <laughs> to the market stats today. We're seeing an upswing right now on new listings. Um, last week we were around 644. This week we're doing uh, 731. So we are seeing an increase in those new listings. We are seeing an increase in pendings. Uh, we're around 1,000 for the pendings. So uh, we're getting back to normalized market conditions, wouldn't you say, Katrina? I would, yeah. So, uh, yes. I'll talk about that, actually, because there's some other stuff in our outline to uh, cover. I'm, I'm excited that we're coming back into um, took normalized. Me a, took me a minute to pull the February data off the printer for Florida Realtors. That's we're going to cover that. I got you. I already did a groaner on the air this morning. So did you cover, this is old, did you cover the current stuff? I, not yet. Okay. I, I'm in the process of it. We're just talking about pendings, and then we talk yeah. about... Uh, Usually we talk about back on markets, price decreases. What do we like to talk about next? I mean, price decreases. So let's I'm, I'm just still, it impresses me that we have so many price decreases week after week. It's not as many as it was. Right. It's, it's, it's still high, but it's, it's not as high. many as it was. The big question is, what is the lowest, lowest interest rate you can get right now? Well, we're going to talk about the rates in just a second, Pat, because that is a hot topic right now of the week. But going back to what you said before, Leo, prime example, I went on a listing appointment last night with one of my past clients. We sold him a house back in 2020, so pre-early COVID days. And essentially, I always like to gauge what people think their house is worth before I get there, right? And kind of like appraisers do, I sort of operate the same way. I pull a rough idea of the comps and I have a general idea, but until I actually go see it and then look at the other comps and how they stack up, I don't put a number on it until we review that data together with the seller. So I always love that, you know, I, I get their input on what they think it's worth. And so I was like, well, what do you think the home is worth? You know, before I get there and, and we'll, we'll go through all the data and I'll give you some real numbers. And you know what his number was? 600,000. Do you want to take a guess what my number was? Where I, and my value is always a range because that's Probably pretty three, accurate. Seventy five to four twenty five. No, no, no. That's too extreme. No, no. Five to five fifty. Okay. Yeah, five to five fifty. Okay, that wasn't that far off. And that. we we went through other data. It was a unique little neighborhood, and I think it's a great one. And then prime example, like his neighbor next door listed in the six hundreds was on the market for almost six months and didn't sell. So that's what you're seeing in those numbers when you look at price decreases of six hundred and sixty five. And so we get into all this stuff, right? And then people always want to talk about commission. And I I will tell people I'm not the cheapest. We're not a discount broker, but you will absolutely get Get what you pay for with me, right? You're going to get your return on investment. And this is after he told me when they had moved here from Oregon, he had an agent that literally no communication, no updates. They go through the house. People are looking at it. Never any feedback. So all those sorts of things play a part in, you know, what you get. So if you hire a discount broker, it's going to be more of the same. And then he proceeded to tell me that that broker didn't even sell it. It was a bad thing. And then he hired this other young girl and she knocked it out of the park and sold it for him. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of the way it goes down. And so we talk about that, our marketing, you know, and we're one of the few industries that we spend all of our time and money and marketing efforts and everything it's going to take to get the home sold. And we don't make a dime until we actually sell the house. So I, that leads me to an interesting question here. Um, in most businesses, people's business owners are supposed to spend anywhere between seven and 15% on marketing efforts of mm -hmm. their top top number which would be revenue um in the real estate industry because it's so competitive i think there's like seventeen thousand realtors in the greater tampa bay area 
Uh, how much of, if you don't mind me asking, how much of your budget is spent towards marketing? So I love that you asked that. And we, we try to follow what we call the Red Book model, so the Keller Williams budget model. And I believe they're around 10%. I think ours is a little less, right? And we have stuff like radio that comes into that as well in part of our marketing budget. Um, but I would say more of our marketing budget and a better use of our marketing budget is spent with time. So when I take a listing, we have to not only sell it to the general public, but we have to sell it to other agents as well. Right. And so all of that is part of our job. And so a lot of it is time on the beginning, getting that listing set up to be successful and then spending extra time in the description. I mean, the pictures in the description, that is what is going to sell the house right off the bat, as long as it's priced right. So you've and seen most- some of these terrible like cell phone pictures and terribly fifth grade written descriptions i mean or there's like four sentences i don't i don't get that i love the ones that say brand new roof and you're looking at it and there's looks like it's a 30 year old roof (laughs) or shingles missing but those are some of my favorites yeah that happened so let's dive into the numbers this week and then we'll talk about the rates pat because i know that was your question and i had typed up a whole little thing this morning well i've got some other questions too i mean i was gone for a week i I was during break um and come back to find out that banks are disappearing again and i got some questions about that i'd like to talk about so it's it's on the list and we'll chat about it. I'll give you my thought. And the interesting thing is I come from the mortgage background as many of our longtime listeners know. So when, since I started in this business when I was so young, I had to combat that, right? As a very young person doing someone's mortgage, which was like the biggest liability people are going to take on. And so um, because that was always a challenge for me at my age, I had to learn. I had to read and learn a lot more than other people my age because people would assume already that I wasn't educated enough to help them, right? So I had to be able to speak intelligently so that when I had a conversation with them, they knew what I was talking about. And a lot of, when I went back and I did my my research and I started reading and learning how all this stuff came to be, right, and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I went all the way back to the 20s, which is when FDIC insurance was created after the bank run right of the the great depression which followed right after and so i'll give you my thoughts on that too in just a second because that it's relevant right for what we're looking at but let's give out the market numbers really quick no we've already talked about new listings we talked about uh pendings what what are we looking at right now for uh what is it uh absorption rate that's what we like to talk about so the absorption rate is still low i mean we're still under three, a three months. months supply. Yeah. yeah, we're still three months supply of homes. As a matter of fact, the Florida Realtors data um, that I just printed for February of 2023 is coming in at 1.9. So it's actually looking at a 1.9. What we've been talking about recently, like the real estate market starting to gain some momentum here in it the is. Bay Area, yeah. starting to pick up again and get hot. That's actually what's what we're seeing here because that, yeah. that 1.9 is lower than the 3.4 which is um, absorption rate of all the houses on the market sold and there are no new houses on the market, how long would it take them all to disappear? Yeah, so it is. And I'll tell you about my own experience and what I see. Going back to what you guys talked about, and I jotted my notes down this morning because when I have a clear head and I'm not talking to myself, I write down what I'm thinking. So the the feds hiked the rates this week another 25 basis points. Which was expected but not expected not really because of the two banks that went under we were expecting well, them not to raise the rates at all no 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 no. the feds, feds were talking about actually hiking at a half to 100 basis points 100 we haven't had 100 basis points i understand in a while. that's what they were talking about before the svb you know collapse run whatever that's what they were talking about was moving it a half to 100 basis points and then some people said well they're not going to move it at all and then the Fed's still elected to hike at 25 basis points. So I know our show doesn't specialize in that level of money, but uh, have, have anyone been discussing on this radio station the treasury spread and why these banks went under? So, well, you have to think about it. That's a big tech bank, right, out of Silicon Valley. I mean, that's the, the point of it. And I, I think one of the thoughts that I wanted to bring today, other than the fact that this is the ninth rate hike, right, that the Feds have had, Ninth consecutive rate hike. It's the highest it's been since 07. The Fed funds rate went from almost zero to now 5%. That's what banks buy money for from. The, what they buy money from from the Federal Reserve. And so they're still trying to cool inflation. It's around 6% and they're looking for that target rate of 2. So I, I think 
what they need to come to terms with is in this post-COVID economic system, the standard model of raising inflation to curbing spending isn't working. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff not working. And we'll talk about the FDIC insurance and all that stuff when we come back here on Tampa Home Talk. But as soon as we come back, it's time for ye old merriment. That's right. It is Renaissance Festival weekend. It's the final weekend. No, no. Next weekend's the final Oh, next weekend. Okay, we're giving away tickets. Stick around. Welcome home. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. I was expecting some merriment in festivities music. I'm not sure what that no, slow. Like you know that I wasn't expecting the Renaissance music, this classical music from the Baroque era. Uh, it's the merriment music with the lutes and the flutes and the pen. Pat, get it wrong. Yeah, Pat played Baroque music from the classical Renaissance period. Since I'm just starting the Facebook stream live, let me just give them the numbers real quick, and yeah. it would recap. Oh, the numbers eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. That's eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. Let's go back to the numbers in the third segment. Okay. Fine, we'll do it. Stick around, Facebook. There we go. This, this is your Renaissance Festival segment here on Tampa Home Talk. And we have tickets. And we have tickets to give away. I think we either have 10 or 12 tickets to give away. Yes, we have quite a few. So you seeing this number, 813-377-2775, becomes very important because in a couple of minutes, I'll be asking you to text that number, text the word TIX, T-I-X, and uh, you can potentially get a four-pack of tickets to the Renaissance Festival. Yeah, we actually have quite a few to give away, and I think we can get some more. Oh, the Renaissance Festival has been a festival going on for the past six weeks and has two more weekends. Good Squire, thank you for asking. So you're going this weekend, Leo? I'm going on Sunday. It is located in Dade City, the same area that the Kumquat Festival was in, the same area that has a great brewery in its center sh- of town. You should just move to Dade City, Leo. Uh it's a little far out there. It's like an hour <laughs> from where I currently live. But uh, You had a pause on that one. <laughs> I did have a pause on that one. I, I like Dade City. I like it a lot. But I, it just What's can't your, replace living right next to the Straws Center. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the Renaissance Festival? And it's different every weekend, right? Different. Yeah, I mean, the Renaissance Festival is an awesome family experience. you got to think that it's been going on now for 20-plus years, probably 30-plus years. They have a bunch of comedy shows. They have vendors that are selling wares. They have fun games like axe throwing or climb this ladder that's twisting. Do you, you still have your exchange student? We still do. She's going with you? Yeah, she's never excited? been to a Ren Fair before. Uh, she's super excited. Um, how long is she going to be with you? They still have the jousting. It, it, the jousting is always uh, an interesting experience. It's like every couple of hours they bring the jousting piece out and it tells a story throughout the whole day. Uh, they changed it a couple of years ago, so I'm hoping we'll get another change in the story. And the food. You, you can't talk about a festival without talking about its food. I remember when we had the Strawberry Festival gentleman on several weeks ago. He, even he was talking about the food. The only thing I remember from Renaissance Festival is those big turkey legs, which I don't really eat. Yeah, turkey legs are a big part of Ren Fair. Uh, I fall How into the trap. How do they get trap. so many just turkey legs? I think they're emus, but okay. they're probably oh. emu legs. But I, I fall into the trap of the turkey leg. But, I mean, you have coal-fired pizza being made, Scottish eggs, Ye old hamburgers and hot dogs and sausages. I mean, there's more than just the turkey leg. But you can get a turkey leg, and you can feast on that for about 10, Days. 15 minutes, <laughs> and you can get your fill. I'm the only one that cleans their turkey leg straight down to the bone. Wow, that's a lot, that's a lot of meat. Those things are huge. Those are huge. I just kind of <laughs> take the cartilage off as I keep eating it, and uh, I throw the, the cartilage pieces away. So, yeah. Not my jam. I'll have my coffee this morning while you guys eat your turkey legs. I'm just saying. So what I love most about Ren Fair is the variety. I mean, you've got, if you want to see some comedy shows, you've got comedy shows. If you want to see some acrobatic shows, you've got acrobatic shows. Uh, normally, we have the... The, the, the Wheel mu- of Death the guy. The Wheel of Death I from like, Gibsonton. He, he's pretty awesome. And then we have the Mud Skippers. What are the, the, the Oh, yeah. The they, were, they came right before COVID, remember? Yeah. And then, like COVID shut everything down. And on they're them. like a combination comedy show plus acrobatic show put together. 
And then there's music. If you want to do a pub crawl through the, the different pubs there, they have that as well. It's you know, I, I still can, I'll never forget, like when I had the Wheel of Death guy on, and I might have Zoomed him. I think it was during COVID. So I don't know if you guys were on for that. But I was just talking to him, and I was like, so what are what are some of the things that like that would surprise people? You know, I forget exactly the question I asked him, but I remember his answer. And he was saying how basically he built the we- the wheel because he wanted to make sure it was, you know, it's a, it's a lot of math and engineering and that sort of stuff that goes in it and just how he learned and he practiced and he's like I'm I'm surprised that people literally some of the stuff they yell at them you know like that they wish they would fall and no one just really wishes crazies. that they would fall. But who would yell stuff like that? It's it's a common thing. I mean okay. like when you're younger you want to see the acrobats get hurt Slip and when up. you're older you want, want to see them survive it's kind yeah. of like the the moving of life the wheel of death guy he's been doing this routine i, I since i've been going to ren fair 15 years ago you dress up? i do i'm i could see that i do totally. and i will and actually does nikki dress up with you no she doesn't she looks at you like you're astray yeah so this year for renaissance festival i actually and i can't wear it so i need to find something else but i was gonna go as a hunter from destiny but it's going to be 92 degrees on Sunday. So Oof. I'm not going in that kind of costume. I, I'm not wearing a hoodie with a mask. So I'm going to... Doesn't that sound like fun? You know, it's going to... And that, that is the one drawback. Because even Pat, who does traffic and weather here at the station, can tell us it's going to be really hot this weekend. Is this going to be record highs, Pat? Not only is it going to be hot, it's going to be a high humidity. Oh, great. So if the Renaissance Festival is not your thing, we have our picnic in the park tomorrow. Well, that's tomorrow, the 25th. Tomorrow, I think it's the 25th, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is. From 11 until 3, we'll be at Felipe Park. And so if you want to come, we'll send you guys the invite and RSVP you. 813 Yeah. Yep. Eight. Do it again. 813 And as I promised beforehand, we're giving away tickets for Ren Fair. Uh, we have them. In printed format. Yep. I think we can scan those and email those. Text either. Yes, we can. Text either ticks if you want the Renaissance Festival tickets yep. or picnic if you want to invite to our picnic in the park. That's going to be awesome. We're going to take full advantage of we're in spring. We're bringing the 90 degree weather. The El Nino, Nina, Nino, whichever one we're in. Is it this year? Yeah, we're getting we're getting the one that does the dryness. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, a little. It's a little bit complex for me. All that weather stuff. Well, we should have a lesser hurricane season this year than you last think year. That'd be good for insurance. I think. I, I think anything would be a lesser hurricane season for Florida than last year. Yeah, we're definitely. supposed to get. I mean, we did get our. It's 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 like clockwork. We did get our February storm that we get once a year. We're set to get an April storm. This just happens every year. But we're not. Expe- I'm not expecting the intensity of the hurricane season we got last year. We need a break. That's for sure. I think we totally need well, a break. And the insurance companies that are left need the same break Definitely. as well. Definitely. I agree. I'm really hoping that they put some normal reform in so we can have some more insurance companies carry, come to the state. But, I, you know, I am a big advocate. I think the roof claims really help put us over the edge. I think it's a big component of it. And honestly, they should have depreciated the cost of the roofs. If you got an old roof, you should not be getting a new roof. It should just be in the statute that it depreciates X amount for That age. makes sense. I mean, I, I, would, I always thought depreciation was part of the formula. And it is on some policies and not on others. It, it's it, not it, standard enough. That baffles me. Yeah. It's not standard enough. So going back to rates real quick, Pat George oh, was asking. A, I know. Oh. We'll, we'll talk about it again. At I the need end. to talk. We'll, we'll, we'll end the hour on the Renaissance I'm Festival. I'm so excited. I got a bunch of shows planned that I want to see. There's the dance shows. I love following the music troupe around from pub to pub. The music troupe? Yeah, there's a music group. There's like they play and then they move around and they play some more. I, I probably would have more fun following you because I get there and I'm like lost. And I'm Are like, you going on Sunday with us? I don't know. You I should. Might. I might. You should. Depends on how exhausted I am from the picnic the uh, day before. I was going to say, what excuse could you possibly have but that, that epic picnic tomorrow that you have to set up and tear down for? Yeah. It's kind of early, so we may. We Where may is pop Felipe in. Park? It's Safety Harbor. Safety Harbor. If you've never been there, you got to pop in. It's, That's the land of sinkholes. It's, it's an incredible park. Yes. You can't miss it. It's beautiful. So going back to rates, Pat George, you were asking about rates, right? 
So I want to talk about this because I think it's important, right? So with the Fed rate hikes, red hikes, you're going to see higher rates on things like obviously car payments, credit cards, student loans, home equity lines, all that stuff. But more importantly, the interesting thing about this is I we priced a loan with Sarah Crickey at the Mortgage Farm, our, our show partner for Tampa Home Talk. She was pricing just a stellar rate with a little bit of a buy down right at six. It was like five nine nine, right? This was like earlier in the week or a week ago. I think it was early in the week. So then after the Fed rate hikes, and you might be saying, what the heck is she talking about? And I'll explain. After the Fed rate hikes on Thursday, they hiked it a quarter of a percent. At that point, we repriced it again. I think it was Thursday and was able to lock five and a half with a, you know, a little bit of a buy down, but not terrible at all. And so most of the rates we're seeing, Pat, are between six and seven. This particular one we were pricing was putting like 30, 40% down, 800 credit score, like the, the loan engine just really well, liked the this deal. This is where banks are getting in trouble. And this is something I mentioned before called treasury spread. And we'll have to explain that when we come back from the break. Yes. Yeah, so the... The point is, like, short-term rates, the mortgage rates, yes, the long-term, what the Fed does ties into it, but banks overestimated. Remember I told you the 50 to 100 basis points some of the banks were expecting, so they built it in already to their pricing, so when the Fed's only changed a quarter, some of that pricing got better. But I would say you're probably in the sixes for most people right now. 813-377-2775. I've still got Renfair tickets to give out. 813-377-2775. <laughs> This is awesome. The bagpipes. This reminds me of the second weekend of Renaissance Festival where they do the Highland Games, where they have the Scottish people do a bunch of different activities such as tossing telephone poles and bales of hay vertically and horizontally and throwing shot puts for distance. The Highland Games. Did you know Dunedin has a large Scottish community? Yes. And did you know they also do a Highland Games once a year? No. Did Theirs is like Olympic style. I mean, like, I like the one at Renfair because it's Renfair. But the one that Dunedin does, usually it's in April. And I, I haven't looked it up to see when it exactly is this year. But that one is epic because it's like three rings set up. Uh, you got Scottish music playing, bagpipes. You've got the athleticism. like the, the sh It's like the strongman competitions for men and women. So... Every weekend's different, right? Renfair? Renfair, every weekend is different with Renfair. I think I just met Pups and Pooch. And I know since next weekend is the What's last... Pups and Pooch? What is that? That's where you have your, your... You bring your doggies with you. Yeah, but what else? They're just... Pups it's and It's a pooch. dog. It's a, it's a pet weekend. Okay. And then the last weekend's always the Masquerade Ball weekend. So I haven't... I actually didn't look up what this weekend was. I think this one might be... No, the Pub Crawl weekend was several weekends ago. I'll have to look that up. But every yeah. weekend's got a different theme. Um, people can buy season passes for the Ren Fair because there are some people that can show up every week. I'm going with a group of people that actually have season passes this, this weekend. How much is a season pass? It's usually like the price of three tickets. Oh, my gosh. But you can get free tickets. 813-377-2775. It's 813-377-2775. I think a full season might be a bit much for me because well, it's like two months go, long. You don't have to go 100% at the time. It's still a bit much, I think. If you get into the lifestyle, like there was one year I went, um, there's a card game out of a, a video game called The Witcher 3, and the card game was called Gwent, and there was someone there that was playing Gwent for beer. So if you beat them, they bought you a beer. If they beat you, you bought them a beer. I sat down, I played a couple of hands. It was fun. We ended up even on the, on the, on the split of the game, but I mean, just to sit down and play the card games with people... That, that social interaction you don't get nowadays because of the whole onlineness of COVID. So you played card games at... The Renaissance Festival. You did? Yeah. Well, I sat down at the pub. He had his spread, and he was taking all comers. I knew the game, so I sat down. And it wasn't like a normal card game. These are like Gwent's based on The Witcher 3, which is based on like medieval times. So there's medieval card games going on. Or I don't know what any of that is or what that looks like. It's awesome. So I, I know I just, but if you showed up this Sunday with me to Ren Fair, you I can, can watch. You can oh, watch. Serve. You can observe. I can I can give you a behind the scenes tour of Ren Fair. Okay. 
I'll text you Sunday. Text me we'll, Sunday. We'll, we'll think about going. But then you got to text me before I get there because once I get there, technology doesn't exist. Oh, okay. That's right because you're a renaissance. No, because the cell signal is kind of dead there. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Oh, yes. The, they have a merry-go-round and they have the, 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 the maypole where the ladies dance around the pole holding the streamers. So they have two different types of memories. It's also similar to that in Mexico, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, the Aztecs. Yeah. Or the Mayans. There was a show at uh, Escaret that was that had that. It was neat. Aren't you going to Puerto Vallarta? Or no, uh, yes. You go in a couple of weeks, aren't you? Mid-month. Mid Next month. month. That's going to be fun. I don't know where I'm staying yet, but... Are we going to have to pre-record? We'll figure that out. Yeah, probably. Or you guys could do it if you want live. I'll right. figure that out. Pat and I can figure it out. I know the pub crawl. Well, there is a pub crawl that happens every, every week. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have Pat to is going to be free for like days, so he's going to be looking to get into all kinds of things. Oh, are you able to come on? Uh, have you ever been to Ren Fair, Pat? I have not. What? No way. Well, I'm not the one in Dade City. Well, well you should true. go. Does it look like the one that was out by USF? Because that one was under trees. It was pretty dirty. <laughs> It's bigger and it's probably a little cleaner. I think it's not as as mud pit ish. Do you think? Yeah, it's not as mud pit ish. I actually like when I went to the one that was in Mosey. It was a little bit larger on the setup and it was more spread out. But yeah, I was like the inside of my nose was covered in dirt. And uh, this time it's it's got feels, some shade. Feels more green, less dirty. It's, yeah, less dirty. Oh, this weekend is once upon a time. The lanes of Fiddlesworth are magical because of the princesses, princes, fairies, elves, and other fantastical creatures that roam there. Participate in... Yeah, it's kids' weekend. Participate in your costume contest and flaunt your royal and magical finery. Or just enjoy the beauty of the village. So this is the... This is children's weekend, basically. All right. So what time are you going? Did you plan that yet? Yeah, I've already planned. I plan to show up around 11. Okay. Yeah, plan to get there around 11, leave around 3.30, then hit the brewery. I'll talk to Chris. The brewery sounds like a plan. Yeah, <laughs> just show up to the brewery. And then Maybe. if you can't make it this weekend for the costume contest, you have next weekend, which is High Seas Adventure, Bon Voyage. And that is the, basically, they're doing a tattoo contest next weekend. Like a real tattoo contest? Yes. Show off your tattoos. Okay, that's a little interesting. That's new. I guess they're not doing the Masquerade Ball this year. But, uh, yeah. So it's your children's weekend. This is a perfect weekend now that you've taken them to Strawberry Festival last weekend and the weekend before. I'm so bummed we missed it. Like, I didn't get a chance to go. You had free tickets. I know, but I didn't get a chance to go. You need to take in more festivals. I know. For sure, we should. All right. You ready to wrap up a few more things on our outline? Wait, I have one last thing to one ask One more run thing? One What's more that? thing to ask you. Why do the police drive trains well? I'm stumped. Tell me. Because copper is a good conductor. <laughs> <laughs> you and the dad jokes. You and the dad jokes. Stick around. There's more. No, that's it. I only two is my limit per show. I only heard one. Was there two? There was a. I'm not going to repeat the one from okay. earlier. Pat yeah. groaned on that one. Must have missed it. You did. All I think right. it's something to open the show with. You're running back and forth. Oh, like got it. Lighting coffee. Um. Oh, spring weekend this week. Wow. Yeah, I got so I got so excited I nearly wet my plants. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've done it twice. We've just lost half our listeners. Thanks, Pat. All right. Let's talk more about real estate <laughs> in the, the housing market. So we talked about the Fed rate hike of yes. a quarter percent. So it's a good time if you are looking in the market to get locked in. I would suggest like now, now, now. Don't wait. Yeah, right. Because it's going to get more expensive. Cool. I don't think this train is going to slow down till we hit in the eights. And I've said that for a while. If you remember, I said mm -hmm. that several, several, several months back. Um, the good news is I think even if we hit the eights, Florida's a bit insulated compared to other markets because our demand is still really, really high. Well, here's the danger of that, though. In the bank... S SVA and Valley Silicon Bank need to be the lesson. Banks are still hungry for business, and the cost of getting money from the Fed, because banks have to get money, mm -hmm. the cost of getting money is more expensive. So as the banks fight the Fed on the rate increases to write these mortgages, they're going to end up losing money. 
Yeah, a lot that's of them. called the treasury spread. A lot of them are pushing as well to try to get more deposits, like cash deposits. If you've noticed, like a lot of them are offering really attractive CD rates. And well, they need that. They, they, they need, need the, cash. the cash on yeah. hand to be able to loan the money because right. there's like. When, what happened in 2008 to 2013 is banks were able, for every dollar the bank had, they could lend it out 13 times. Right. They've got, and then there's another whole thing. If they're, if they have a certain number of defaults, the amount of liquid cash you have to have on hand, right. substantial. And now after the lesson of 2008, they lowered it from 13 to seven, but it, it's still a multiplier. So what's happening is banks need money to lend money. And if you have a rush of people trying to withdraw money, that is where the banks get into trouble because the banks are losing money. If, they, if it's the banks are used to making three to four percent on the money they're lending, and now they're making one to two percent because they're actually trying not to. And it, it the, the law of supply and demand. If you, if you look at the curve and you think of a bank as a business, for every dollar of increased materials, for every dollar of increased um, the cost of doing business businesses can't pass on the full dollar to their clients. They, they pass on a percentage of it. They take more of a loss. And yeah. they take some of a loss. So that's how inflation hurts businesses, and that's how inflation hurts these banks. So if the feds raise their rate 4%, the banks might only raise theirs 2 and a quarter, and they lose 1.75. Yeah, so their yield And smaller. that's what happened to these two banks that went under. So with Florida being such a hot real estate market, these credit unions are at risk. The small Florida banks are at risk. There's a lot of more banks at risk than we realize, especially in Florida's real estate market. So I'm kind of concerned from the outside standpoint, looking at the smaller Florida-based credit unions and banks. I think that people are going to take more of the cash they have on hand and invest it in tangible assets. So things like real estate, things like gold, tangible assets, land. I, I think we're going to see more of that. We're already seeing like hardly any land left, you know, yeah, just that's so scary. much of it is, I know, but that's, it's a tangible asset that's going to be really important. And I, I think, I think Florida's going to continue to see this demand. We've got a little bit of a reprieve on the Fed rate hikes till summer. So July 25th, 26th is our next meeting. Uh, and we'll see what happens there. You know, the condo market is, the, is the thing that really, it, I'm worried about some of the elderly population that we have living in well, condos. Well, the condo market, I mean, we're we're going gangbusters right now on these structural integrity reserve studies. And on average, I, I said it before, I've got a I'm presenting in front of a real estate committee next week. Um, we are seeing an average of 25 to 35 percent dues increases based on the new criteria for the Senate Bill 4 D reserve studies. Year over year. Yeah, year over year. Where it was like I had one where they were reserving. 50000 a year, and I've got a board meeting this afternoon where I have to tell them they have to go to 95000 a year on a 40-unit building. It's a, it's a big I, that's deal. A, that, yeah. They're doubling. Are they trying to make it up over HOA fees or special assessments or both? You can't do, you can't do special assessments, so you just, have to raise, reserve? You just okay. you have to raise your HOA fees or you raise the reserve component of yeah. it. But, I mean, that's hitting the condo industry really hard. I, th I think the condos are in for a little bit of a rocky ride. Oh, they are. Because from <laughs> what we understand, Senate Bill 4D, quote unquote, is so successful, and that's the one asking you to do these reserve studies, that they're going to lower the criteria from three stories to just ground level. Oof. So now we're expecting by all condos, all condos and then all apartment buildings and townhomes, oh and then all hotels. When did that change? It's coming. It's Ooh. coming. It's going to be like two or three years to get there because we got to get through this initial hurdle of the three stories and up buildings, but we're getting there. And their deadline is the end of 2024? Do uh, have this done? Some of them end of 2023, some of them end of 2024. Okay. Pat? Did you say hotels? Hotels will be included in the on the long-term <laughs> scenario of this. I've been in some pretty dingy hotels, so I mean, yeah, these they need it. All right. Well, we're going to talk about inflation and the average savings here. Some of these numbers may surprise you. I was surprised. But this is some of the stuff that's going on and why the feds are hiking the rates. And it's it's going to squeeze the American dollar and the savings rate even more. Call or text 813-377-2775. This is Tampa Home Talk. We'll be right back. <laughs> home 
this is Tampa Home Taco, and actually, Leo, great find for the final segment. Uh, we're going to talk about that in just a minute, something really big that just passed. I have breaking eight. news. Yeah, real quick, let's just wrap up on our, what we promised, the savings rates. We we're talking about this. So I was looking, Leo, and I got I pulled a bunch of data in terms of the average American savings rate. The average savings account balance is $4,500, and this was between 1959 and 2022. So the average uh, savings has been about 8.96%, and uh, the average household savings rate in the U.S. was only 5.1%. So in the second half of 2022, that really dipped. Um, gross savings, personal savings in the U.S. is worth $2.3 trillion. One of the things that I thought was really striking is two-thirds of Americans have less than ten grand saved. That is amazing. Like, I hear of some of our employees at Barrel working paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, and there's just, a lot of it. I just don't understand. Ten percent of Americans have zero this, zero yeah, savings that's living paycheck to paycheck zero that's, that's if anything goes wrong you've got nothing to fall back on yep. credit card debt so according to the survey 36 percent have less than 10 grand um and basically 27 uh, percent have 10 to 50 grand and 15 percent have 50 to 100 thousand and only nine percent have 100 to 200 thousand and uh the median real quick and i was i was going to talk on this charlie munger article but we'll talk about that next week um the looking at the median and the average not including retirement it was pretty interesting they did this by age so under 35 the average is 11,200 compared to the median, which is only 3,240. And that's why I always argue for median over averages. Mm -hmm. I don't care about averages. Median is if I had t 11 things lined up side by side in order, I just take the middle one. Well, that's that going to give you a true number. Because when you look at the average, if you have someone that saved a million dollars and then you have 100 people that save nothing. Yes. You're closer to the people who have nothing than you are the guy that has a million. So averages are skewed. We should only be talking about medians in any statistical. Look at the difference, shot. right? Like, so that's why you have to be careful what you listen to. But the, and this is striking for me. So thirty-five to forty-four, their their median is forty-seven ten. But their average is thirty thousand. Yes. So it's very misleading. So it is. If you are doing anything, uh, listening audience, if you are doing anything out there that you can have averages on. Ask for medians. Because that's a more accurate depiction more accurate of the number. Depiction. So here's the thing. 45 to 54, that's the earning years of your life, right? It's when you're typically earning the most amount of money. They have a median savings of 56.20, so a little over five grand. And then what's worse is 55 to 64 is only 6,400 bucks. All I can say to this is if your employer has a matching 401k program, do it, do it, do, do, it, it. do, it, do it. It's free money. It forces you to do some savings, and then the company gives you savings yeah. on top of it. So the richest man in Babylon, excellent read. So you guys always pick on me about movies, but I bet you I've read more books than movies. So Richest Man in Babylon is one of the best principles you'll ever read with money. It's on my mind right now because my team and my daughter are reading it and it's such a good, there's a modern day version. I recommend buying that one because the older version is harder for most people to follow. Well, got to shift subjects real quick. Yes. We do have breaking news. We have to wrap up on this. We yeah. have to. So what is going to happen with the real estate market in City of St. Pete? And the reason why I say that is last night on a seven to one vote, the city of St. Pete passed a rezoning in the name of affordable housing. So if your house is located along certain corridors, and I'm showing a map right now to Katrina, if you're, on, if you're in the yellow on this map, if you have a single family home, you have been rezoned to the point where you can put a quadplex on the same property. You can put it a quadplex, a duplex, a triplex. So basically, as what Katrina said earlier, we don't have the ability to have more land this allows the existing land with an existing house to become a more housing, a more housing, which with the idea, and I say the idea of it going to affordable housing. However, from what I understand, there was nothing in the ruling that said it had to be affordable housing. So you're just allowing duplexes, triplexes, well, and quadplexes. Well, think the about it. If you're replacing a single family on these postage stamp size lots, and they are in St. Pete, yeah. there's only a certain size unit you can fit, right? So you're talking a 1-1 one, one or a 2-1, which is probably going to be, if you're lucky, a thousand square feet. That's not saying, that's not doing anything to cap rents or to make these it's things It's not, affordable. but still at the end of the day, you can only rent a space that big for so much that's true you know what i mean no i hear it's you. not like they're going to be charging four grand a month for a little one one that is true um and, and like i said i it was it was a good move in the name of affordable housing 
I just hope that it actually is you know in what, the name of affordable housing. You know what housing. they should do in the name of affordable housing? Yes, this is a good start. But more importantly, all the money in the Sadowski Fund, 100% of that should be going for affordable housing. Oh, definitely. Which is your seniors, your down payment assistants, all these people that need either a supplement or whatever. Even a part of Section 8 is that. So what happens with the real estate in the yellows here? Is, are we going to see drastic price increases on these properties? Are they more, de- are they more desirable? Do I developers want to buy them? No. So part of the caveat you have to look at with that is the flood zone, right? Like if if they're in a flood zone, how is that going to play in? Well, some of these are definitely in flood zone because they're by right. by the watch of the waters. Because if you're in a flood zone, you've got to build up. Not too much of this is in the flood zone. Actually, no, oh, half of it's in the flood zone. So okay, you, build, you can, so when you tear down the house, you've got to elevate it. And you've got to do all these extra things to make it stronger. So that could keep it out of the affordable housing market right there because you've got to augment it in a way that's not cheap to build. Right. So I think that's going to play a part of it. I think what you're going to see more with this rezone as opposed to a teardown and a rebuild, I think you'll see additions. I think you'll see accessory dwelling units. I think you'll see add-ons. You well, know, I don't know if that's like allowed. That. I think it's... It, like they have to tear down and rebuild. If I have a single family home and I put something in the backyard, is that a duplex? Well, it can be construed as multifamily. No, this is specifically duplex, triplex, quadplex. Right, but it's, it can be detached. You can have two units that are detached. Would it still be considered a duplex? Yeah, if it's two units okay. with two kitchens, sure. As long as yeah. it's... Yeah, as it's just as not considered. attached. There's two units. Okay, I just didn't know the legalese there. If, if, if it's really detached, is it really a duplex or is it just two so units? So it doesn't really... It's it's on the order of a duplex in terms of the fact that there's two kitchens and two separate living spaces. Um, I, I think, you know, if it were to get put into MLS, it wouldn't get put into the duplex, but it still would be recorded as two families. So it'd be a single family home with an accessory dwelling. So if I was an investor right now and I wanted to do some wholesaling, I would try and contact people in the yellows to get their houses because knowing what the potential is for them. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what's there, right? Like what's there? Are you tearing it down and doing a rebuild? I mean, if you have a little, you know what, shack that needs to be torn down, that's a good deal. I'm pretty sure that if you look in the areas, you're going to find things prime properties that developers will want to yeah. tear down to put a quadplex on. This will be interesting. We should definitely follow this a little bit and see what's happening, you know, in that area. But seven to one, I mean, I think you're going to see the other municipalities follow. Don't you think? I do. I think we're going to see more of a follow. I'm, I'd am i be interested to see it. I mean, affordable housing is an issue. We need more of it. We do. And I don't know if quadplexing is the way to go, but it is, is a step in the right direction. Well, we need more doors. You look at the supply chain and the absorption rate. We don't have enough doors for families. We don't. So this is Tampa Home Talk. It's been a great hour. Thanks, Leo. We'll be back next week. Live uh, where you live or we'll fix it. I'll Welcome have more home. dad jokes then.